And Brandon, let's chug right along into our next segment, talking about Brandon's favorite conference in all of college football. The conference that he says, Ricky, I stay up late every single Saturday just to watch this conference because most of their games are starting at about 930 here in the central time zone. Talking about the Pac-12, talking about Arizona State. Herm Edwards, what did he used to say, Brandon? What was the uh, the quote that he used to say? We play to win the game. You play to win the game, and that is exactly what the Sun Devils are doing. Two games into this season, and I find it funny. We talked about three new coaches in the Pac-12. Pac-12. Chip Kelly, 0-2. Kevin Sumlin, 0-2. Herm Edwards, 2-0. Beaten University of Texas San Antonio, 49-7. And then the big win this past weekend, 16-13 over the number 15 team in the country. Now they are the number 25th team in the country, the Michigan State Spartans. And Brandon, I'm going to ask you this question. Could Arizona State surprise people this year or surprise us this year in the Pac-12 now that we know what we got from them. Well, I th- I think that they already have surprised people. I think that they already have surprised people. I don't think that there were too many people out there who believed that they would beat Michigan State. I mean, when we get to con- – they got Washington in two weeks. Are they going to surprise Washington in two weeks in Washington? No. Okay. <laughs> no, but you asked me the question. I know. They've already surprised people. Mm-hmm. They've already done better than what I expected them to do. I did not expect them to to beat Michigan State mm-hmm. at all. But could I'm- they in the Pac-12 no. The conference? No. Okay. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's there's too many other teams with 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 more talent. I mean, USC hasn't really looked all that great to start the season, but I think USC has mm-hmm. a little has a little bit more talent than than what Arizona State has and, and is playing with right now. Oregon, I, I I think an Oregon team should beat Arizona State. A Utah team, I mean, I think they're kind of underrated. Uh, they should be able to beat them. Stanford should be able to beat them. Even a Colorado team mm-hmm. could could beat Arizona State, but that's all based off of what I've seen so far. I mean, Arizona State again could could come out and just surprise and, mm-hmm. and shock. And I think they just caught Michigan State completely flat footed. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. I I don't think that Michigan State is going to be that bad and and play that poorly. But I don't I don't think so. I look at this as a part of me. Okay, there's part of me that wants to give Arizona State every credit in the book. I will give them a lot of credit. Got, I mean, they won the freaking game. Exactly. But I you got to go out that, there and play the game. I think that they caught a Michigan State team mm-hmm. flat-footed, kind of looking past this game a little mm-hmm. bit, thinking, "Hey, we're gonna go and we're gonna we're gonna play this game. It's gonna be late. No mm-hmm. one's gonna watch it. It's gonna be one of those blowout games." And that did not happen. I can. All right, I'm gonna meet you halfway. Because on the ASU side, I'm meeting you 110 percent of the way. You got to go out and play the game. You play to win the game. Herm Edwards, that what that's what he preaches. That's what we know he preaches. And they went out there. They got the job done. It was a close game. They got the win late in that game. However, on the other side of it, Michigan State, there's a part of me that looks at that side of it and goes. This is a team that first off almost lost to a Utah State team that only ran for 25 yards. Their quarterback had zero touchdowns and two interceptions. And that's the Aggies. That's Utah State's offense. And you almost lost 38 to 31. Like, you, this isn't like, a, oh, you blew out your first opponent. Like, this is the second time that the Spartans have kind of been caught off guard. No, I know. So like I know. that's why I'm I each, I'm meeting you in the middle. Maybe they overlooked two games in a row, but you would think after what happened in week one, they'd go, Oh, okay, woo, we oh man, it we we gotta go. It's kind of like this is gonna be a very rough analogy, but it's like when you do something really bad that could almost take your life and you get away with it or you don't die and you're like, whoa, never gonna do that again. Never doing that again. That's kind of what happened with Michigan State, with losing being that side. And guess what they did when they went to Arizona State? They did it again. And this time, they got bit, and they lost the game. I mean, Arizona State, like I said, this is about them 
They went out, they played the game, they have looked good. I know it was 16 to 13, you can say, well, Ricky, they didn't look that good, but Michigan State was a tough opponent. I'm looking at Arizona State this year, and I'm going, hey, you know what? Maybe they don't beat Washington at Washington. Maybe they don't beat Stanford at home. But I'm looking at the rest of the schedule going, all right, you can definitely beat Oregon State. Southern Cal hasn't looked like the Southern Cal we thought they would be. I know they haven't played a conference game yet. But, hey, maybe this Arizona State team gets some mojo behind them, goes into the Coliseum, upsets a Trojan team. I think they can maybe beat Utah, that UCLA game, that Arizona game. Like, with how those teams have looked, I know the Bruins had Wilton Spate go down and that kind of fell into especially game one. But that Kevin Sumlin, Arizona Wildcat team doesn't look like what we thought that that team would look like. I'm telling you that that quarterback, Tate, he's not on the Heisman watch. And you're not going to be on the Heisman watch when your team is 0-2 to start the year I'm looking at some of these other games, not the Washington, not the Stanford, maybe not even the Oregon game, but I'm looking at those other ones, Arizona, UCLA, um, Oregon State, maybe a Colorado, a Utah, I'm going, all right, some of those are now for sure wins in my book, while other ones are leaning more towards the middle ground to where this could be an Arizona State team that, yeah, they're not going to go out there and win their side of the Pac-12, but they can beat some of these bottom feeders, put themselves into a position to where next year it could be, we're talking about them, hey, can they make the next step with a Herm Edwards, true Herm Edwards recruiting class? Well, Arizona State, with where they're at now, with starting off 2-0, this, they should definitely be able to get at least five or six wins this mm-hmm. season. And they should certainly get a win against Oregon State, I think. Mm-hmm. I think they should be able to get a win against Arizona. And I think that they should be able to get a win against UCLA. That's five right there. And and I and, and you that's, just need to find one more win, and you're in a bowl game. And and again, you the, the Colorado game could mm-hmm. be a toss up uh, game. It, it's it's on the road. I think U, USC by the time that I mean it'll be close to November at that yeah. point. It's it's October 27th. Hopefully, they JT will have Daniels they will closer. have their their things figured mm-hmm. out because they've got a game what coming up against Texas. Yeah, USC does. Week. That's that was you know supposed to be a game when they were putting it on the schedule. Yeah. Whoa, this is going to be really exciting. Two two and O teams uh-huh. that are going to be really fighting for something. Not so much. Yeah. So I, I think that USC will have it figured out by then, mm-hmm. and they should be able to beat Arizona State. But right now, Arizona State does look like a team that's got some energy. They've got life, and it's because of that head coach. Of course, they've they've got to have talent as well. But Herm Edwards is bringing a really good. Energy. He is mm-hmm. revitalizing these this team, and he's he's, he's breathing. He, he really is bring, breathing life back into it. The thing that Arizona State plays into, and I'm going to go in relation to the Trojans. The thing that they they pose now is in the preview when I was saying, ah, this Trojan team, they'll probably lose to Stanford, win all the rest of their games, play a Washington or a Stanford in the Pac-12 title game. Now it could turn into. All right, they lost against Stanford, lose possibly to Arizona State, have two losses. Is there another team like a Colorado that jumps up and says, oh, we don't have two losses, we only have one in conference. Sit down, Trojans, we're going to the Pac-12 title game. Like That, to me, is what Arizona State will be this year. After two games, I am kind of got that mindset of like, they're going to play upset to somebody. I don't think it'll be Washington on the road um, at Washington in by Seattle. I don't think it's going to be against Stanford. Those two teams are really good. But I look at it, and I'm like, I don't think Oregon, or, Oregon, I almost said Oregon, Oregon, or is it Oregon? I can't speak right now. The Ducks, basically, because that one's in Eugene. So it's like those three games, Washington, Stanford, Oregon, yeah, you know, probably not going to win those games. But then you look at those other ones. You mentioned the f- four that would bring them to, or three that would bring them to five. But, like, I look at Utah, Colorado, and USC, man. They could play upset to one of those teams. Well, really, it would be USC right now would be the only upset. But they could play spoiler to some of those teams and possibly get into a bowl game. Or just beat San Diego State this week. You're at three. Then beat the three teams you talked about, Oregon State, UCLA, and Arizona, and you've got yourself a bowl game. 
If you're Herm Edwards and the Sun Devils. And I do believe that they're favored this week uh, for the game against San Diego State. Actually, a, a pretty a pretty big favorite. Mm-hmm. So if they could start off, if this Arizona State team could start off 3-0, and they would already be doing better than what people had expected from them mm-hmm. at the beginning of this season. I don't think anyone expected them. Uh, well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I, I will say no. I don't think anyone expected them to go three and zero. A lot of fans would have probably hoped for it, but I don't think anyone expected it because I personally believe that Michigan State was going to be a much better team than what they have showed so far. Mm-hmm. Michigan State was supposed to be this team that was returning all of these starters offensively and defensively. They were going to be this sound team who brought back a good offense with a good passing game and a running game. And all these defenders that were going to be making big plays, mm-hmm. so far, it's been really far from the truth. Right now, Arizona State opened as a three-point favorite against the Aztecs. As of right now, they are a four-and-a-half-point favorite against the Aztecs this weekend. Okay, so not a heavy favorite, but yeah. certainly a favorite. Mm-hmm. I I do. I think that they could probably start off 3-0. and and then from from there, you add on those other th- three wins that I had said. You've got six. Could possibly be seven. Mm-hmm. And that's if they win those those three. I'm not saying that those are three guaranteed wins. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we're, we are looking at a team that I, I didn't think that we'd be seeing. I, when I was watching part of the game, actually, believe it or not, I yeah. was watching part of the game. I was mm-hmm. at the bar. Um, and I looked up, and I'm like, oh, yeah. There is still a game on, and it was the Michigan State Arizona State mm-hmm. game, and I could not believe it. I could not believe what the score was. One, how it was so low scoring, and two, mm-hmm. how Michigan State was on its way to losing. Yeah, and I mean the thing that I look at with this team is when I was watched when I've watched them this year, you look at that defense and you go, yeah, it's a Herm Edwards. Like the watching them play. You say to yourself, yeah, that's a Herm Edwards defense. That is a Herm Edwards, let's go out there, let's get this team, let's basically, because like they like there was a play, I think it was in the week one game, where they had a 300-pound defensive tackle pick the ball off and rumble, bumble, and stumbling in for the score. He had a pick six, 300-pound lineman. That usually doesn't happen when it comes to when it comes to um, defenses and what they do. And it's like, I just watch this team and I go, Hey, you know what? This is a team that is built defensively. Like they right now are the 16th best scoring defense. They have the same amount of points allowed per game as the team we talked about to open the podcast, Virginia tech, 10 points per game this year. Opponents have scored against them. Arizona State, 10 points per game. They are on the same scale as you've got Wisconsin, 8.5, not that far ahead of them. Georgia, 8.5 as well. Stanford, only 6.5. And I get I get it, I get it. Two games, probably not the toughest opponent for most of these teams. But like Arizona State, you beat a, you beat a Michigan State and you're only allowing opponents to score about 10 points per game on you. If they keep that up or anywhere near that up this season, all the offense has to do is score. Yeah, score two touchdowns and you win most most games. If your defense is only giving up ten points per game, and that to me is going to be the the biggest strength of this team and why they could possibly beat opponents is because of how strong their defense has been. You're right. I mean that's absolutely going to be it. And as we've talked about before, two. Tonight, mm-hmm. as we've as we've done these segments, it's been a lot of defense. It's been a lot of whose defense is going to be better, whose defense is going to be able to limit, in, in, in the case of the Ohio State and TCU mm-hmm. game, who's going to limit the high, if there, is TCU going to be able to limit the high-powered offense of, of Ohio State? And then when we were talking about Clemson, Virginia Tech, Who's going to win the turnover battle? Mm-hmm. And who's going to play the cleanest game? What defense is going to be able to take the ball away? That uh, that defense is so important. Everyone wants to be able to look at the offense and say, how many points can you score? Well, look at this pass game. There were not a whole lot of points scored. But it was 
who is going to be more effective? And mm -hmm. I think that, that that did come down to how good defensively this Arizona State team played because I really am and convinced that if this Michigan State team is able to figure it out and turn it around, mm -hmm. they can score a lot of points. And that just was not the case. And a big part of that is because Arizona State has a solid defense. Now, I'm going to ask you this question, and I've got two final questions. One about Arizona State. I'll save that till the very end. This one's kind of, I'm taking the needle and I'm injecting this into the topic. This was going to be just to pull the curtain back for everyone watching and listening at home. I had in my mind watching that game, all right, if Michigan State wins this game, we'll talk about should Michigan State fans be worried or how worried they should be about their team. If Arizona State wins, we're talking about what we're talking about right now. But I'm going to ask you anyways, the kind of short, the TLDR of it, is how worried should Michigan State fans be about their team? Not only, like, it wasn't like a, whoa, we got out of that one with a win. They're 1-1 one and, one and could have easily been 0-2 to start. Should Michigan State fans be worried in East Lansing? Yeah, I think that they should be. Uh, I think they should be a little bit worried because that's no way to, that you want to start off the season. That that's for sure. Especially when we we're talking about them maybe competing in the Big Ten Beast. Well, that's true. I mean, I and I still think that there will be competition for that. Mm -hmm. But you are going to be if you're if you're Michigan State, you've got a very tough schedule coming up mm -hmm. you know ahead of you i mean you're going to be playing quality opponents and, and 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 like you mentioned while arizona state may have been a quality opponent let's say they are because mm -hmm. they're in the top 25 for now yeah you lost to them the game before that not really a quality opponent you barely got by them mm -hmm. it's it's interesting to say the least so far on how Michigan State has started off. But two, I think you could say the same thing about Michigan State start, started off slow. Penn State, they started off slow against Appalachian State. They came out certainly and, and put up a, a whopping number and on against Pitt. I know they Pitt. blew out and, Pitt, and then, but they started out slow against Pitt too. And then uh, Michigan, they came out. They did not play mm -hmm. well against Notre Dame. And then they, of course, put a... Notre Dame's a tougher opponent, they, they put a shellacking on... In, but I'm just saying yeah. they they I mean they've we were all started mm -hmm. off outside of Ohio State in yeah. the in the beast mm -hmm. the Big Ten East they've all started off a little slow and that's where I think the only the only difference from like Penn State's closer to Michigan State but they got the wins um, the only difference between like a Michigan and a Michigan State is you talk about oh Michigan started out slow. They played Notre Dame compared to Michigan State. They played Utah State. Like, that's the level of the opponent where, as I almost look at Michigan now and go, oh, you started off slow against Notre Dame. Yeah, but Notre Dame played really good, and, like, they're a good team. Like, that week one game, they were a good team. They were probably the better team, deserved to win that game, whereas Utah State, it's like you should have went in there and just laid the shillelagh, like, to take an— fighting Irish term, you should have hit him over the head with the shillelagh and ran away with that game. You should have basically King Leonidas from 300, Sparta kicked the Aggies into next Tuesday, but you didn't. You only won 38-31. Here's the final question. Like, because for me to answer to, I would be freaking panicking if I'm a Michigan State fan. I don't think you beat Penn State. I don't think you beat Ohio State this year. Like, just the fact that you almost lost to Utah State, I would put Northwestern as a possible loss, Penn State as a loss, Michigan as a possible loss, Purdue as a possible loss, Ohio State as a loss. Two for sure losses, three possible losses on the year. Will they lose all, what, six? Six, five of those games? Probably not. But, like, I would panic about those opponents after almost being 0-2 to start the year. The last question I was really going to ask you is about Arizona State. Put a 
if de facto on the Arizona State, how do you think they're going to do in the Pac-12 this year? Do they make a bowl game in Herm Edwards' first year? I say that they'll make a bowl game. I say that they'll make a bowl game. They'll mm-hmm. win six, maybe seven games, and they'll they'll go to a bowl game in his first season, and they'll be very, very happy, uh, certainly about that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can definitely see it happening. I can definitely see it happening. I've got it right here. I'm going to go game by game really quick. They'll win this week against San Diego State. There's your spoiler alert for the next segment. They will lose against Washington, boo-hoo, but then they will beat the Beavers next week. They're not four wins. They'll lose to Colorado. Eh, it's in Colorado. You'll live with it. Ah, they lose to Stanford. They were a better team. They upset the Trojans. Boom, there's five wins right there. You know you're going to have a lot then, of Trojan fans that hate you because they, the Trojans don't think that Notre Dame could exactly, beat them in the Coliseum. They certainly exactly. don't think Arizona State could beat them. They lose to Utah. They beat UCLA. There's six. There's your bowl game. Poof, confetti goes off. They lose to Oregon and Eugene. They beat Kevin Sumlin and... Arizona, they finish with seven wins. They get a good bowl game. Herm Edwards, a successful season, I think, at the end of the year for the Sun Devils. And kind of maybe what we will start to talk about after this year is kind of what I think it was um, during the Michigan State game. They're saying it was the ASU AD was talking about turning when they were looking for a head coach, they were looking for someone who could turn this program into a college football contender, a guy who could turn it because they want, obviously everyone wants their football program to be one of the best. And we could look at the season going, okay, maybe in three years this team is competing for the Pac-12, especially their side of the Pac-12. They've really got a good two-game start to the year under Herm Edwards. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section. What do you think of the Sun Devils? After two weeks, am I too high on him? Is Brandon right on the head with him? Because Brandon's not blowing too much smoke up the um, Sun Devils' rear end. I mean, because you just said win this week, beat three teams that are bottom feeders in UCLA, Arizona, and Oregon State, and you get your bowl game where I'm saying you're going to upset the Trojans in the Coliseum. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section. 